Well, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Solving Equations with Trig Functions. This is part one. Essentially, what we're doing in this lesson is we're learning to solve elementary equations that involve trigonometric functions. So just like regular equations, you want to solve for the variable, right? Like x squared plus 2 equals 3. You want to solve for x. In these equations, the variable we want to solve for is going to be theta, right? But it gets more complicated because the, the, the issue is that since the unit circle is a circle and there are often multiple angles in a unit circle that have the same sine and cosine, very often in trigonometry you can actually have multiple angles, multiple answers, for the, the, the equation that you're trying to solve. So what usually happens is when you're given a trigonometric equation, it'll say, solve this equation, and uh, the answer for theta must be between this range, between 0 and 360 degrees, or between you know, 0 and pi, or whatever. The, the, the problem may give you a range of theta that's, is, that is acceptable for the answer to that equation. So what you need to remember is that in the previous lessons, we've already talked about this, that when you take an arc sine or an arc cosine or an arc tangent, the calculator or the computer or the whatever device you're using is always going to give you the fundamental kind of base angle in the base range of those tr uh, inverse trig functions. And so then you might have to often take that base angle and look at what the problem's asking you for and and add 180 degrees or do some other kind of gyrations to get to the actual answer that the problem asks you for. So long story short, inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent as operations always give you angles back in certain ranges. But the problem may say the angles that are acceptable for answers for these equations are in, in, in a known range. And so you may have to, to add or subtract or convert. This is where you have to start using your brain and you can't just like plug things in. You have to know what the, what the question is asking you for. So, for instance, let's just say, let's do a very simple equation. Sine of theta is equal to zero. Solve for theta. But it's also known that theta can be only in the range between zero and 360 degrees. Notice it's including zero, but not quite including 360. But it's bigger than zero, less than 360. So that means essentially the whole unit circle. What, it, what it's basically telling you is solve that equation. But the angles that you write down as your answer can be anywhere between zero all the way around to 360, but not including 360, because then you'd be back right on top of where you started from. So any angles at all, even though we know that this is a, a, a sign, so when we do the arc sign, it's only going to give us angles back in a certain range. We have to provide essentially all of the angles that satisfy that equation in this range. So let's just go through with it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so how do we solve this thing? We apply an inverse sine to the left and an inverse sine to the right. When we apply an inverse sine operation to the left, it annihilates the sine, and all that we're left with is theta. On the right-hand side, we have the inverse sine of zero. This is what we have to do. So we applied the inverse sine to the left, that dropped it away, inverse sine to the right. Now we remember that inverse sine from previous lessons, we've done this in the last lesson, the inverse sine or the arc sine only returns values back, like from a calculator, in this quadrant. From negative pi over 2 up to positive pi over 2. So if you stick numbers in the calculator and hit inverse sine, inverse sine, inverse sine, you'll always get angles between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. You will never ever get angles anywhere else in this circle because that's the kind of the basic range that covers all the bases, and, and so that's the only ones you're going to get back. But our problem says, give me all angles between zero and 360 that satisfy this. So what you have to do is find like the basic angle that works, and then check and see if there are any additional angles around the unit circle that also work, right? So let's just go through it, all right? What angle is such that the sine of an angle is going to give us zero, all right? We do that in a calculator, what do we have here? Well, if you look at zero degrees, the sine is the projection onto the y-axis. So zero degrees, there is no projection, so the sine of zero is zero. So we know that theta can be zero degrees or zero radians. And notice that this is the angle that will be given back to us in the calculator. Go ahead and hit zero in the calculator, inverse sine, and you're gonna get zero degrees or radians, whatever mode you're in, and that is right in the middle of this range, negative pi over two up to pi over two zero is right in the middle. So that's why it gave us that as an answer. However, are there any other angles around the unit circle that also give the sine of that angle to be zero? Well, if you look on the other side of the unit circle over here at pi, what is the sine of pi? 
Well, the projection onto the y-axis over here is also zero. So it's outside the range of the fundamental range of the arc sine function. The calculator will never give you pi as an answer. But our equation says, give me all angles from zero to 360 that satisfy this. Only in this range though. And so we then know that this is one of the angles. And then we put an and down here. And then we say that theta can then be 180 degrees uh, or pi radians. Just writing it in degrees and radians so we get some practice with both. So that's what you write down. So we're, we're looking for all angles in this range where the sine is zero. The sine is zero right here. The sine is zero right here. If I go around again, notice there's no equal sign under 360, so I don't write 360 degrees down because it's not included in the range of theta that it wants. But you, I mean, obviously you know that you can keep spinning around the unit circle, adding 360, adding 360 over and over, and you'll get tons of angles, but all of those other ones are outside of the range it cares about. So that's why I harp so much about what the uh, kind of the basic range of an arc sine, arc cosine is. That's why I, I emphasized it so much, because that's the angle the calculator will give you. It's like the base angle. But in real equations, you often have a wider range of angles that you're hunting for that satisfy the equation. So you need to get the base angle first, and then often you add 180 or subtract 180 or something. Notice the first angle we got was zero, and then we added 180, and that also satisfied the equation. Often you'll be adding or subtracting 180, sometimes other things, but that's a very often, a very common thing that you will do. So that's the solution to problem number one. So we have two answers, and these two answers are equally valid. When you put 180 in here, sine of 180 is zero. When you put zero in here, sine of zero is also zero. They both work. Now let's take a look at the tangent of, uh, I guess I'll put it in parentheses, tangent of theta uh, is equal to zero. Tangent of theta is equal to zero. And again, theta can be between zero and 360, but of course not including 360. All right, now what we need to do to find theta is apply the inverse tangent to both sides so we can get rid of this and, and put theta by itself. So theta will be the inverse tangent, arc tangent of zero, or you can write it as tangent with a little negative one there. All right, so essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to take the arc tangent of zero. Now you know that tangent or arc tangent is going to only, as a function, it's only going to give you values back in the right hand side of the plane from negative pi over two up to pi over two. That's what we learned a long time ago. That's the basic answer, and you may have to look for additional answers in this range that satisfy the equation. So you can think of it like this, but I actually you know, prefer, especially for tangent, to come down here and say what we're really hunting for is the sine of some angle over the cosine of some angle. And the, and the, ra and the angle is going to be in this range here. Um, is going to be equal to zero. Now, if you have sine over cosine equals zero, what you're trying to figure out is what angles uh, make it such that when you do the division, you get zero. So what this really means is since you want a zero here, you want sine of the angle to be zero. Because if the numerator goes to zero, you'll have a zero over anything you want is going to give you a zero, even infinity. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, well, it does matter, but I'm just trying to tell you that to figure out the angles that make it go to zero, all you have to do is find out where the numerator goes to zero. Where is sine of zero equals zero? Where is sine of zero equals zero? The angle that you're looking for is zero degrees or zero radians. So if you go put uh, zero in a calculator and do the inverse tan or do the tangent of zero, you're going to get zero, um, and, and it's also in the proper range. All right. So here we are, zero degrees. But are there any other angles in this full circle range that make the tangent go to zero? Basically, are there any other angles that make the sine go to zero? It's the same question as before. We go over here to pi, and over here at pi, sine of pi is also going to be zero. So we also say and theta can be pi or uh, zero degrees. I guess I wrote it backwards, but you get the idea. So actually, in this case, we have two different equations, and we get these exact same answers. And the reason that we get the exact same answer is because the first equation was the sine. Uh, tell me where the, the angles, where the sine of that angle is zero. The second equation is tell me the angles where the tangent is zero, but when you think about it, that's the same angles where the sine is also zero. So it, it gives you the exact same answer, even though it's a different equation. And we have found all the angles in this range first by finding the fundamental angle, in this range, and then, you know, in this case, adding 180 to figure out other additional ones. But I don't want you to think, oh, I'll just add 180 every time, because it's not going to be the case. You have to think through it, right? So let's take a look at the next one. Let's say we have the tangent of some angle theta, 
and that's equal to one. And in this case, the range of theta for this equation can be between zero and 360. And, and in, for this lesson, all of the ranges of theta will be here. But just know that when you solve other equations down the line, more complicated equations, the range of theta that you're told to, to bind yourself by or to look for will be different, okay? It may be even between zero and 90 or zero and 180. It'll lock it down in different ways. Here, we're just starting. So we, we just choose the entire unit circle. Tell me all angles in the unit circle where the tangent of the angle is one, okay? So you do the inverse tangent uh, and to, to, um, to both sides, and what you basically figure out is that the uh, theta is gonna be the inverse tangent of one, right? The inverse tangent of the left, inverse tangent of the right. And so you go over here and say, well, again, where is it gonna give me angles back? The tangent function gives me angles over here, all right? So uh, you can think of it that way, you know, I mean, it's fine to say inverse tangent of one, but really, even though I wrote this here, really I like to come down here and say, well, the tangent is the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. And basically I'm trying to figure out all locations in around the unit circle where the sine of the cosine is one. So when you think through it though, uh, the tangent is sine over the cosine. So the only way that can be one is if the sine and the cosine are equal in magnitude, right? Equal. And that's only at 45 degrees because you know at 45 degrees, the sine is the square root of two over two and the cosine is also the square root of two over two. So, and that is also in the correct quadrant uh, for the tangent up there or in the correct, you know, uh, 45 degrees up here is in the shaded region. So we then say that theta can be 45 degrees or pi over four, just converting it to radians there. And the reason that you know that, I'll just kind of write it off to the side. It's because the sine of pi over four over the cosine of pi over four is square root two over two over square root two over two, and that equals one. So that angle is, is the only angle that gives you a positive um, tangent of one like this. And it's in the correct uh, quadrant. Now, the, the quadrant, the actual range of angles that we need to, to hunt for is the entire unit circle. So are there any other um, uh, angles where the tangent will be, um, a positive one like this. So you start thinking about it, right? Let's go over to our unit circle and actually look. So what we basically said is the base angle for the solution to that equation is at pi over four because sine over cosine is one, that's the tangent, right? Now, if we go over to this quadrant here, if we try to divide sine divided by cosine, we're still gonna get a one, but it'll be a negative one because we divide here. If we go to this quadrant over here, we'll have a sine divided by a cosine, but again, it'll be negative one. So it can't be this quadrant and it can't be this quadrant. But if we spin all the way around, totally diagonal to this one over here at 225 degrees, the sine is negative square root of two over two. The cosine's also negative two over two because the projections are on the negative axes. But when you divide them, you still get a positive one. So basically by taking this and again, adding 180 degrees, and going totally opposite, we get to another quadrant where the sine and the cosine are negative, but the tangent is still a positive number. So then we can say, and theta can be 225 degrees or uh, five pi over four. Let me just check myself, 225 degrees or five pi over four, and you circle both of those. So we're trying to find all angles within a 360 degree circle that work. 45 degrees works right here. I'll just kind of like, Put this out here, pi over four works. And then if you spin all the way around over here, five pi over four or 225 degrees also works. In quadrant one, sine over cosine gives you positive one. In quadrant three, sine over cosine also gives you positive one because the sine and the cosine are both negative here. In this quadrant, the tangent's negative. And in this quadrant, the tangent's also negative because you have opposite signs on the sine and the cosine. So with tangent, you really have to think about what quadrant you're in to get the correct answer, all right? Now, the last problem we have, I don't really wanna say it's tricky, but it does require us to think just a little bit, all right? So let's solve the equation. Sine of theta is equal to negative one, and let's do it in the same range. Theta has to be bigger than or equal to zero and less than 360 degrees. So what we'll do is the same thing we always do. We'll come down here and we'll say, imply the inverse sine to the left and the inverse sine to the right. So we'll have theta is inverse sine of negative one. 
And we know that the inverse sine is going to prove, uh, in a calculator anyway, it's going to give us angles back that are going to be in the right-hand plane like this from negative pi over 2 up to positive pi over 2. Okay, so let's go and take a look at this and see what happens. Essentially, what we're asking ourselves is what angle in that range is such that the sine of that angle is negative 1? So where can it be? What is the sine of 0? The sine of 0 is 0 because there's no projection on the y-axis. What's the sine of pi over 2 up here? The entire thing lies on the line, so the sine is 1, but we want negative 1. So if we go down here, then we see, okay, down here at this angle, the sine is um, uh, uh, negative 1 as well. Okay, so what we write here is we say, well, the base angle of what the calculator would give us, go ahead and put it in the calculator, hit negative 1, hit the inverse sine button, and see what it gives you. It's going to tell you that the angle is negative pi over 2, which is exactly in the range of what we said, negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2 for the sine, and it's giving me negative pi over 2 because here the projection is exactly on the negative 1 part of the y-axis, so this is the base angle, right? negative pi over 2. However, look at the answers it wants us to give us. It says solve this equation, but give me angles back that exist from 0 up to 360 degrees. Let me ask you, 0 to 360, 0 to 360, is negative pi over 2 between 0 and 360, or 0 and 2 pi if you want to think about radians, is it in the range? I mean, we know that it's down here and we can find a, another angle that has the same label, but literally negative pi over 2 is not in the range because negative pi over 2 is actually even less than 0. So the, this is an example of when the base range that a calculator gives you back is not in the range that they tell you the angle can be for the answer to that equation. So even though the calculator gives you that angle, you cannot circle that angle as the answer. This is a great way to get a question wrong without really, because you're not thinking about it. It gave you an answer outside of the range of what you're allowed to get. So how do you figure that out? So then you say, well, okay, I can't put pi over 2 down there. So what angle is in that range? I know it's down here, so you go, well, this is pi over 2. I'm sorry, this is pi over 2, then 2 pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2 down here. So what you then say is theta is really equal to 3 pi over 2, or um, 270 degrees. This is the angle that you circle, because 3 pi over 2, or 270 degrees, is in the range. Notice 270 uh, is right here. So, and if you want to check yourself, go down here to 273 pi over 2, the sine is negative 1, so you can verify that it's correct. I realize and I recognize that this gets confusing because I've been telling you that the arc sine only gives you angles back in a certain range, and now I'm telling you to reject the answer that it gives you and give me another answer. Well, that's, that's the way the game is played. The calculator, as you get farther in math, you're going to realize just using a calculator is not going to help you so much because the answers a calculator gives you can be outside of the range of what the problem is telling you to give you. The problem is saying, only give me angles that make this equation work between 0 and 360 degrees, not including 360. Don't give me any angles outside of that. So you stick this in there, you do the inverse sign, or you think about the where it is in the unit circle, and you say, okay, that's a negative pi over 2. So you circle pi over 2 and it's wrong. It's because negative pi over 2 is not in this range. So you have to think. You have to, you can't just do, you have to think. Okay, the angle is here. It's labeled as negative pi over 2 because that's the base angle of what the calculator will give me. But I need to express this location in this range. Okay, so I got to go in the positive sense. Pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. This is the same location, same angle. Now it's in the range. And in this case, I only had one angle in this range of a complete circle. That gives me the sine equal to negative 1. In all the other problems, I had two angles that worked, and they were 180 degrees apart. Two angles worked 180 degrees apart. Two angles worked 180 degrees apart. Here I give you a problem where you do not have two angles 180 degrees apart. You only have one angle. And also, you had to reject your base angle anyway and count in the positive sense to get there. So that's why I can't tell you, oh yeah, just get the answers and add 180 all the time. You can't. You can't do that. You have to know what the problem's asking you and think logically about what's required. This problem only has one solution in this range, okay? So make sure you can solve these yourself. They're all good little problems. They're not super hard, but they do require you to think. Follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to get more practice with solving equations that involve trigonometry, trigonometric functions.